Last month saw FIFA unveil its 2026 World Cup logo to a collective. What the f is that? Critics labelled the emblem as uncreative and boring. And I can't help but agree. Look, I get FIFA's thinking for it, right? They wanted clean and adaptable. And on those two marks, it hit the spot. In fact, it's so clean, it may as well be sanitised. Just a thick cast vertical 26 dropping from the sky with Jules Rimet slapped over the top of it. FIFA called the logo a vessel of self-expression, whatever that means. Again, I'm joking. It's so the logo can sit in front of any host city and be interchangeable. When you're hosting a tournament in three different countries, it can be hard to make sure that everyone's culture and geography is well represented in one full logo. So in a way, FIFA can be seen as quite clever for doing this. They've sort of absolved themselves of any responsibility. They've gone, here's a template, do what you want with it, and we're not getting involved. If you think you've been over or underrepresented, we're not in that fight. But it got me thinking about previous World Cup logos and their brandings, graphics, etc. None of them were designed anything like this. All of them, whether popular or not, were trying to encompass the culture of the host nation they were representing. And this just doesn't do that. Of a magnitude that uh, will be massive, more than 6 million people. So let's run through the history of the humble World Cup logo from its inception to present day. Figuring out what makes a great brand logo to a terrible one. Feeding off the emotions that can be attributed to the artistry of a near century of World Cup logos. And the only place to start is in Uruguay in 1930 at the inaugural World Cup. Now, foremostly, I must begin with a confession. The first four World Cups didn't actually have logos, they had posters instead. I know, I know, I apologise. Who would have thought that a World Cup that saw a nation miss out because they missed the shit picking them up would forget to design a logo? Certainly not me. All hope is not lost, however, as these posters are just as fascinating, if not more, than the logos that followed. Designed by Uruguayan artist Guillermo Laborde, this poster depicts a stylized goalkeeper saving a shot inside a green and orange frame with the Spanish words for World Cup of Football following underneath in black silhouette text and finishing with where it is being held and when. This poster is an absolute marvel. As described, it was influenced by the avant-garde, abstract and surreal movements of the era, which perfectly encapsulates what the World Cup was all about. For those who don't know, the definition of avant-garde is new and experimental ideas and methods in art, and that was exactly what the first World Cup was trying to achieve in football. Before the World Cup, a global football tournament hadn't been tried and friendlies were the norm. The beginning of the World Cup challenged that previously asserted notion flipped it on its head and that is perfectly encapsulated in this poster. 9 out of 10, what a start. Moving on to Italy 1934 and we definitely notice a tonal shift. This one is far more business. Here's a football player, here's the word World Cup in multiple languages, done. Now that's not to say I don't like it because I do like certain elements, for example the football player that looks like a sprite that's been ripped out of a PlayStation 1 game. Other than that though, it's a very stock poster. 3 out of 10, nice socks. France 1938 is an odd one. Given the backdrop of the world at this time, Adolf Hitler had already invaded Czechoslovakia, for example. Italy were in Ethiopia doing their thing. This poster gives off the image of unity, which definitely wasn't there in the global political landscape. Nevertheless, I do like the imagery. The ball on the world with the rainbow-esque background makes it an objectively good poster. Just a bit of a conflicting one. 6 out of 10, I'm not sure. 1950 Brazil. After a few years break because of world events, the World Cup was back in 1950 and with a very, very lovely poster too. Simplistic in design, but glorious in execution. The nation's flags making up the sock is a lovely touch and the boots glowing above the foggy world beneath, marvellous. 8 out of 10, very classy. Next up was 1954, which saw host nations begin to create their own logos. And first of all was the Swiss. And looking at it, oh, yeah, I mean, it's that is a logo. That is absolutely a logo. Trust Switzerland to produce the most boring logo in the world. The earth with a football in the middle 
patterned with the Swiss flag. Two out of ten, must try harder. Sweden 1958 came next, and this is a far better attempt. I have gripes with it, but let's start with the positives. The ball soaring through the air is always a great option for me. They've texturized and added shadows, which marks it up once more. I like that the Swedish word for football is at the bottom, just in case you are unsure of what sport this was. But now for my dislikes. The footballer looks like they are ice skating. No idea either. You might also be wondering, what does VM stand for? Good question. It stands for Voltmaster Kapit, which means World Championship. That doesn't seem very inclusive on a logo when it's just one nation's language that isn't commonly spoken around the world, but never mind. 5 out of 10, it was definitely better than Switzerland. Chile 1962. This is essentially a rehash Switzerland, but in execution it's far better. A sphere which is football patterned at the top and globe patterned at the bottom is intercepted by a stadium depicting the Chilean flag. It's simplistic and gets straight to the point. It's still lacking a bit of flavour, but far more than what Switzerland has to offer. 5 out of 10, I would die to see a good one at this point. 1966 World Cup held in England and this is a great logo. Union Jack background with rings of text inside showcasing a globe with a football cover with Jules Rimet and, and the Three Lions badge underneath. Sublime foreshadowing in that it did actually come home. I'm heavily biased, but I've got to say this is a great one. 8 out of 10. I know that was then, but it could be again. Mexico 1970. So from 1970 is when FIFA began to stick their nose in and take ownership of the logo. FIFA very clearly wanted something brandable, not unique to the culture of the nation hosting the World Cup. It's just a boring logo, this one. The text font is fantastic, to be fair, but the logo itself is just a blue football. And who in the world, when they think of Mexico, thinks of the colour blue? 5 out of 10, great font, bad logo. 1974 West Germany. This is bad again. Utterly devoid of passion and symbolism. I hate this one. It manages to say less than nothing. I just want to move on. 1 out of 10. Boo. Argentina, 1978. There's a fair bit of history to this one. Designed by Ronald Shakespeare, the man with the best name in the world. And this was meant to depict then Argentine president Juan Domingo Perón raising the ball. Sadly, Perón passed shortly after, and in the 1976 coup that was successful in Argentina, the new military government wanted to change the logo. FIFA stood strong, and thus this is what we got. Now I think it's pretty okay, given how soulless the last two have been. This one is not bad. 5 out of 10, Ronald Shakespeare is my bad. Spain 1982. This logo was actually designed under General Franco, uh, but he died before the World Cup began. This is just so generic. If FIFA released this now, it would look like they were using the free graphics on Canva. It's fine, it's just pretty lifeless. 5 out of 10, vamos! Mexico 86, just 16 years on from hosting their previous World Cup, and they improved heavily on this one. The font remains sublime, just stunning beyond belief. The logo itself is pretty basic, but it just works, it just fits the time. Hats off to Ruben Santiago Hernandez for this one. 8 out of 10, now we're talking. Italia 90, viewed as one of the greatest World Cups of all times. Could it have a logo to match? Yes, it can. Graphically, one of the most revered of any international event ever. The logo is just class. Italian tricolour showing the ball in motion with Futura stencil IGC font to simply say Italia 90. 9 out of 10, bellissimo! USA 94, another good edition of a World Cup logo. This really was a golden period of World Cup logos and this one is right alongside. Not quite of the same standard of the last two but well coordinated anyway between the American flag and the ball soaring. The font could be a little bit better but I think that's been a bit picky. 7 out of 10, this is going too well. France 98, this logo was designed by Asda, which is a French design agency, obviously not the supermarket. Anyway, the football is decorated in the French tricolour scheme and the blue beneath is meant to signify the earth with the football on the horizon. It's okay, the font is very late 90s and I enjoy that, but it's a bit too try hard for me personally. 6 out of 10, Sacre Bleu, Korea, Japan 2002. Wow. The magnum opus of World Cup logos. For two nations who, before they joined their beard, had logos that looked like this, how on earth 
they managed to end up with one this good is beyond me. The stylized World Cup trophy utilizing aspects of, from both nations' cultures. The font, the perfect font, Inter Brown, the creator of this, did the best job possible. So good that the next two World Cups used the stylized Jules Rimet in their logos. 10 out of 10, true perfection. 2006 Germany, this was the first World Cup I can remember, and thus I do have a soft spot for this logo. It's very goofy and colourful with the happy faces. Bizarrely, this logo was actually created by a UK company called Whitestone rather than a German one. Perhaps that's why it lacks a bit of connection with German culture. But I still really like it anyway. 8 out of 10, Toll. South Africa 2010, and I wish I liked this one. This is my favourite World Cup of all time, but I am ambivalent towards this one. It's well designed, the font feels very safari-esque. It just all feels a bit obvious. It feels like a PR company made it. It, it. it just feels a bit sterile for me. Four out of 10, I'm sorry. Brazil 2014, and for me, this was clear that the golden period was over. I have similar complaints to the previous one in that it feels very sterile, very PR. The hands together creating the World Cup trophy is objectively fine, but just doesn't feel unique at all. It just feels very obvious. Four out of 10 again. It was fun while it lasted. Russia 2018 is a slight improvement. The pattern is charming, if a bit confusing. The colour scheme works well and the dotted stars are sweet. I just don't think this screams Russia. The font seems a little scared to all in. My word, did they create a lot of variants. Six out of 10, a step in the right direction. Qatar 2022, the first World Cup in the Middle East. And this logo amplifies that well. The pattern is understated and charming. The font speaks to the geographical location the tournament takes place in. It's not perfect by any means. I think it definitely lacks star power, but it was a great nod to the Arab world and is far more recognisable than the last three. Seven out of 10, turns out modern ones can still be good. Well, until 2026 comes along. So what makes a good World Cup logo? For me, tradition is so important. It must be instantly identifiable as to what nation we're celebrating, as well as being a celebration of all the nations taking part. It must be brand recognisable, but be understated enough not to take away from the spectacle itself. It must have charm. It can't be obvious and sterile. It's, it's got to be unique. And most importantly, it must be a commemoration of culture, a nod to the future history books that will be written about the tournament. It must capture the moment in time, where and when it was set, the people that it was representing. And that for me is why Korea Japan 2002 is comfortably the best World Cup logo of all time. It does all of those things to a T. It evokes the spirit of the two places it's representing while being all encompassing to everyone else around the world. And for my last message, I wanna leave you with this. Please FIFA, please incinerate that monstrosity. We'll pretend we didn't see it, just get rid of it, please.